Join us now with her take on NVIDIA, the tech sector, and the markets at large. Jessica Inskip, Options Play Director of Education and, um, uh, and Product. That's saying something for it to be the biggest market cap gain in history on a, in a single session, uh, Jessica. I mean, I know it's a lot of large numbers, but it, it's hard not to just be impressed. Absolutely. And the charts certainly mirror that. And I really think it's interesting what the options market did yesterday. So NVIDIA is clearly in a bullish trading cycle. And when we're looking at something with this astronomical projection, we use something called Fibonacci extensions, which can act as support and resistance. It overcame the 161.8 Fibonacci extension line. And this is from its previous trend, which was 747, which means its next resistance level would be the 200 percent line, and that's about $900. So there's still a lot of upwards momentum. But I love what the options market does on the day of expiration. So when we were looking at the implied move pre-earnings, we can still use that same methodology on the day of expiration, which is today. There was so much bullish volume yesterday for every one put. There was 1.6 calls. They're implying a 2 percent, or excuse me, a 2 percent move today, another 5 percent next week. But the call volume was astronomical yesterday. There is an incredible concentration on the 800 calls, and there was about 115,000 traded there. That's the highest concentration, whereas on the put side, the highest concentration was only about 40,000. So that should give you some perspective of how much bullish speculation was put in by the options traders for NVIDIA. We just don't know who's on the other side of that, that, that call trade. Would that be people that own the stock selling the calls? Would anyone sell those calls naked? Jessica, were there any? That would be, I'd be so afraid. That would that is a that is an unlimited risk potential and that yeah. that is very unlikely. But on that other side, we don't see exactly what it is. It could be a market maker, it could be an individual investor. But if it's the market maker, they're going to keep that delta neutral portfolio, which is why we probably see it close around that 800 yeah. mark today, and we're probably seeing it up two percent. Could do a long spread, I guess, right? You could buy a, a call with a higher strike price. But, but I guess you could do either. You could do puts and sell puts and calls. Uh, I, I guess you if you and and because the volatility on both sides was probably probably pretty rich premiums, right? Yeah, but if you sell calls and puts, then that's neutral. So that that would take away from the bullish. But selling puts capitalize on that high implied volatility, which is very capital intensive. So so the, it, with, yeah. with what you're seeing right now, do you have it? Does it give us a look into what to expect over the next six weeks from Nvidia? I uh, it, it's. It has some overcoming resistance that it's is 900, which is still really, really high. But now I think the market's going to shift. We saw that AI narrative. It's that pull, that demand pull that we wanted to see translating because that's that narrow rally. So now we've checked that box. We need to see some broadening out. So now in order for me to see NVIDIA move higher, I actually want to look at the other indices to see that support, that moral support. NVIDIA is that leader in the group project that's holding up the whole team. I want to see everyone else doing some work, too. What do you, in terms of just sentiment, put call, things like that, what's the overall uh, market telling you right now? What about technology, Magnificent Seven, et cetera? Yeah, so technology, I like to look at the NASDAQ 100. This one is actually showing some trend weakening, which is a little bit concerning. So when I'm looking at a charting perspective, I like to look at the 13, 26, and 40 weekly moving averages over a two-year minimum or three-year period. And the reason for that is that's indicative of one, two, and three quarters worth of prices. We look at the market quarterly. We are always talking about earnings. I want to see prices increase with the security. It's a technical way to look at that fundamental perspective. That's a bullish trend. That is great. I want to see it sloping upwards. However, if you pull two standard deviations for the NASDAQ 100, we're waning away from that. The last time that that happened was actually July 2023 of last year. And that's when we had that big fall. If you if you recall, July 31st, I will not forget that date. So but there's confirmation that's required, and that's by MACD. We, when the underlying makes a higher high, I want to see MACD make a higher high as well. But we look at peaks and troughs. It hasn't peaked, which means it's on watch mode right now. So NASDAQ, I'm, I'm a little concerned with, but there's confirmation that we can definitely look at. The S&P 500 definitely looks better, though. Can, do you uh, follow the, the uh, interest rate complex? I mean, can, there, obviously, there's options there as well. Are, are we... Uh... Are we going back to 5% on the 10-year, or are we going back down? Um, I don't think that's 
going to happen, that's definitely an area of key resistance. So absolutely, we, we have to look at the Treasury market, especially because everything's a function of supply and demand. And that's the way that we look at the technicals. So even seeing participation in auctions is something that I'm looking for. But high key resistance around that 5% level, and they work inversely. So if we do not or if we do overcome that resistance, that could be very, very bad for the markets. But it's good that there is certainly a level there.